Alright. I'll pump for Supercross. NBC Sports. No. Why is it so difficult? Gold. Supercross. I don't want wind. Whatever that is. <laughs> Supercross. 2021. Dairy Internet. Peacock. The sisters company 4.99 a month cancel any time why is it so difficult to watch supercross just want some bar banging and maybe a little mx unfiltered what chance does a privateer have welcome to supercross what do you say to a factory ride oh. welcome back subscribers this is your host Johnny Hopper. I can't get a press pass for other reasons. Please leave. So we're just gonna have to deal with my analysis of the racing. And I don't know if I even want a press pass. You know, I'd probably just be hanging out in the, the pits with the privateers. You know, or, or by myself. But that's beside the point. Let's just talk about the track for just a, a quick second. I'm pretty sure Houston is a full-blown stadium. And they look like they should be longer lap times than the 45... 43 seconds that Christian Craig nailed down on his cheater Yamaha. You know, just kind of interesting that Christian Craig was on the Geico Honda, which is pretty much basically now just the factory 250 team underneath, you know, Ken Roxon's actual tent and everything. But I'm, I'm assuming it's fairly pretty much the same motorcycle and most people from Geico Honda moved over is my clear favorite to win the series even if we have if if we have all 17 rounds but his is only going to be like eight and who knows if it's going to be east and west because nbc sports doesn't even decide to put east and west because they don't want to confuse people because normal fans will be like houston's uh, an east coast round you know they, they'd be upset too but i don't know if we're getting a whole lot of new viewers because this whole peacock kind of bullshit it's hard to even watch the races to begin with. So I'm still with my loving sport is dying. But going back to uh, the analysis here, 450s champion for motocross, Zach Osborne. Press day, wads himself pretty good. I guess the question is, people don't say that press day's practice. So why would you crash real hard on on press day we know my views on that just just moving forward just you know it's he was able to learn the track and so did all the other factory guys on press day as opposed to the silly five minutes they give them for uh, the racing and if you guys don't know yeah there's qualifying during the day and then how the the races actually work is top nine from your heat well first they take 40 guys and it looked like we had 41 in the 250s. We had 44 in the 450s. So damn near everyone kind of got a, a paycheck. You know, I don't know if it was signed by Trump or Biden, but they got a check pretty much if you made the night show. Anyway, the Heat's top nine transfer. And then you have one LCQ with four guys get in. So then you have a gate of 22 riders. All right, same 450 and 250, and that's how it works for anybody that doesn't know much about Supercross. And I'm just completely digressing. I was talking about the short lap times in a full stadium. It should have been more of like 55 seconds because these poor guys had to do 22 plus laps. 
why was it only 45 second lap times? That sounds a little ridiculous. I mean, is dirt as hard to find as this Corona vaccine? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure Houston just has a pile of it laid over in the back. Could it just be because there's not as much money or are they trying to quickly turn it around because we have a race in a couple days in, on Tuesday? I'm guessing it's probably the latter, but still it made for kind of follow the leader type racing. To a certain extent, um, the layout itself, I thought was extremely follow the leader. One of the rhythm sections, particularly after the whoops, I honestly thought that was a great rhythm section. Guys were going double, triple on, wheel tap off, triple off, triple in, quad, double. I mean, double, double, jump on, jump off, double into the corner. Like there was a lot of different rhythms, which I thought were really cool. The track was, after broken, <laughs> looked extremely difficult. TV doesn't do it justice. I think all of the actual uh, East Coast guys have a big advantage at Houston. Yeah, it's the East Coast round, but the dirt there is real tacky and there you get a lot of ruts and people don't understand how difficult it is to jump and then find a rut before you even land. So like you're in the air and you have to find a rut and then jump and triple. There might be a hole there. You might get sideways and you have to try to straighten the bike back out. Yeah, the bike has an amazing ability if you're on the gas to kind of find itself into a little rail and continue to go. But it's still, it's extremely intimidating. A West Coast guy, we don't have to deal with that kind of stuff all the time because we're pretty much hard packed blue groove. So the East Coast guys, definitely have an advantage at Houston um, just because of that type of a dirt, which makes it harder. That's why you saw guys always going lower and lower and lower into a corner because the ruts got so bad higher up. So for all you Tomac fans out there, is this more of... I think it's all uphill for him at this point. That's actually incorrect. No, he, my dad uphill? Used to no, it's, it's all downhill for him. But everybody wants to be up, nobody wants to be down. So it's all uphill for him. But it's easier as you go downhill. So your dad didn't know the fuck he was talking about. Hey, the same from this dude. I said it in my pre-race show a while ago with uh, Chris Cooksey and Rob Beams that I thought this was going to be the only championship that this fella was going to win. I mean, after a while, you get tired. And once you've pretty much done everything, what's the motivation? One more, one more, one more, one more. We got a lot of fast guys in the class now. Granted, I have no idea why that this is freaking the vet class in Premier Supercross. I mean, I phoned it in and put my tamp on in a long time ago, you know, like when I was 27 because I had some stuff happen, but everyone is like, you're a, a crappy old geezer, you know, after 25. And everybody now is 29, 30 or above. I mean, look at Brayton on his uh, put-together team, you know, his privateer effort. Dude, I think just dropped back to like a, a sixth or something, but was out front for a while. And the dude just has an amazing ability to just, I don't even want to say hanging out, but he's just that talented that he doesn't have to hang it out, and he can ride up with these guys. I, I mean, I... Personally, I think he probably should have gotten a, a better ride than what he did, but, I mean, he put together what he could, and in a dying industry like this, like, you got to give him up to his business skills to be able to do that. But um, I, I just want to go over some of the the main standouts. I mean, Barsha already won A1, if you saw stuff on... Barsha has done it again! He lights the candles in Anaheim! The internet, because the, he went to A1 and... Uh, jump the finish line and you know so there was a lot of pressure for him to win and it made up for him because i'm pretty sure his signing bonus was at least in his contract 250 plus I, I know for a fact it was at least six figures to to win a race so that dude's super pumped on that gas gas and a lot of pressure for him and after the finish line dude you saw that that huge quad that he was doing that looked nuts nuts and in the whoops i mean the french fry marvin you thought he would be the best guy to be 
jumping through the whoops, but it was actually Barsha that first, I, I believe, first decided to start using the, the wall jump to kind of double in and then triple, triple, and get out of them. And you got to give it up for Rocks and for just his ability to be able to see what's happening in front of him and start hitting it out, doing the quad like he did in his heat race, and same thing with the little whoop. That is what builds a champion right there, is somebody that has, has the ability to make adjustments on the fly. Chad Reed, Ricky Carmichael, Stewart, all those guys that you think of were great at hammering something at the last second. Granted, I'm pretty sure during the, the whole weekend, though, they saw some of it happen versus press day. They get a look at the track and kind of maybe execute it, maybe jump it once. I mean, you never know. Uh, if, if I had a press pass, maybe I'd give some more little insights, but... Anyway, I, I heard a lot of things with people saying he should have taken out Barsha uh, after the whoops. You know, there's that gnarly step on, step off quad deal. Um, he looked like he was being able to see bounce quad and then kind of double into the corner and could have almost put Barsha on his head, but he decided not to. I personally think that that was a mature, good call for him to do because you don't want to have Barsha your enemy, especially if you have 16 more races. And History has a way, maybe not of repeating itself, but it has a way of rhyming. And if the past is a good indication for the future, Barsha comes out swinging round one and doesn't do a whole lot afterwards. Yeah, there's some exceptions here and there, but you, you get my point. And in a stacked field like this, 10 guys can win. You could say Anderson, you could say Roxon, Tomac, Webb, Osborne, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. So you need to just be kind of top five this year, all race, all, all season long to win the championship. And then we just start talking about Tarmac some more. He, 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 he blew up, completely blew up. You need to have a good start, especially on a track that is a fast lap time. Same thing with Webb. I don't particularly think Webb has the ability to push through the other riders like Tomac does. So he has to start out front. His qualifyings were never on point. You know, he qualified 13th, which I think is a bad showing even for, for Webb. But his finishes are usually better. And I think, what did he get? Did he get 9th? No, he, he got 10th. But then you have Tomac getting excited with a bad start. And of course, it had to have been Freezy that was involved in some sort of incident, which is kind of ironic. Um, I think Pike probably would want to bash his head in a little bit more, but. A little struggle through oh, that. Down goes Pike. Oh, and he is not happy about Freezy at all. That's going to cost him. Um, you know, Tomac probably feels the same way. And then it was interesting, they kind of showed it a little bit off camera that Tomac going off the track was another Freezy incident. So the dude ended up finishing 13th, um, which I think in a season like this is kind of digging your grave right then and there. Webb kind of right up there with these guys need to come out swinging. What happened to Osborne? Just my personal, professional, not so professional opinion is maybe he had too much pressure because he was the last guy to win a supercross race and then he's the motocross champion so he comes into the this round round one thinking he's got something to prove start back up winning uh, he he was sleeping on the gate and then he ended up falling down and on a track like what we saw with the ruts and how fast it is it's hard to make hard to make passes and it Kind of, he shot himself in the foot. So those three guys, Webb, Osborne, and Tomac, have to come out absolutely swinging. And how bad would it have been to see Tomac get lapped by these guys? He was so close to getting lapped. Yeah, his race pretty much got imploded. But still, that means, you know, he wasn't on the ground twice for longer than 45 seconds. These guys were obviously making time on him. Let's go, there's not much I want to say about the 250s because obviously I kind of think Christian Craig is, is on the, the cheater Yamaha and um, I don't really understand him crying at 
the end. Yeah, there's a huge ton of emotions. I was never been anywhere close to having that happen. And, and just what you see on the outside is um, I don't personally think anyone was ever really against him. Yeah, he had this whole WADA scenario with something. People, I've, I've heard both sides of it. Um, but he got it cleared. And I'm sure that was a big deal. I, I almost think that that's mainly the, the huge deal. But he was never not a contender. And him now getting pretty much the best 250 ride, it's not pro circuit anymore. It's that star racing Yamaha, at least in the 250 class. Definitely not in the 450 class. I think it, it, it's a bummer for, for Dylan for being on the 450. Uh, maybe not Malcolm because he's a, he's a bigger, stronger guy, but somebody like Dylan, skinny. But I'm, I'm digressing again. I'm talking about the 250s. Craig's on the most powerful bike, best team out there. I don't really think many people were against him because if they were against him, you wouldn't have had those opportunities. But that's my two cents. I think he's going to win the championship. I think he's in Forkner's head. And Jet Lawrence, I think he's on an inferior bike. Uh, he's an Australian hope. He's fun to watch. At times, I think he can be the fastest guy on the track. But he's young. Factory Honda told him to chill out. And that strategy wasn't working too well because he started getting passed. And if I was a team manager in Factory Honda, I bet I'd be ripping him a new one. Saying, what the hell were you thinking on the last lap? I know you want to get on the podium, but the guy was a couple seconds ahead and you threw it away. And then you went from a fourth to a sixth on the last lap. You need those points. Uh, rookie mistake? I don't know. I want to know what your guys' take is on everything. This is going to be an amazing, crazy season. I, I, I the, the last little tidbit, <laughs> Max Volan, why would they have him on East? think they should have pushed him to west give him a little bit more time at the practice track no matter how talented you are the 250 class is full of guys that are just running and gunning i would have left him in the the on the west coast so again let me know what you guys think on that matter my cats kind of let me know what what he thinks and yeah this is sort of off topic but with 41 riders in the 250 lights class or I don't even think they call it lights anymore it's just I don't know why it's stuck in my head to say lights but the LCQ man these guys are just destroying each other and I get it everyone's got big big hopes and dreams and I'm a super pessimist I just I don't see the point anymore these guys are racing hard for 500 bucks to finish 22nd or win an LCQ. Nobody really cares. It it sucks to say, but that's that's how this sport is. Nobody's ever going to get rich. It's the very very few few select people. All of us are just going to end up with we were fast at one point. Granted, am I speaking a little bit from my own experiences? Is not even being up to the par where. Most of these guys are, are at and have accomplished. Oh, hell yeah. It's, I don't know. It's just sad. There's something needs to change. Can Peacock save the sport? Oh, hell no. We need to be on more main channels <laughs> and somehow get outside sponsors, whether that's social media followings, something. Make this more of a good guy versus bad guy, WWE, something, something, because the writing's on the wall. We're, you can't make any new fans when it's hard to find where the freaking race is. For guys that are diehards, when they make it difficult for even myself to watch it, there's a problem. I mean, yeah, of course, they're going to make it difficult for Hopper, I, I personally kind of think that's why they canceled the Glendale rounds because I was trying to get a press pass. So I kind of prevented. So I'm sorry, guys. I only had three rounds in Arizona. And it's my fault that they got canceled. Oh, that's depressing. Bra, 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 so today I ruined my front wheel. I'm okay. I rode out of it. 
But it was a triple, maybe a triple. I don't know if it was supposed to be a triple or not. I, I probably should have looked at it a couple laps more, maybe a second go around, then my third lap decided to try to jump it. Anyway, fourth gear wide wasn't good enough. I luckily walked away. But should I buy A60s and Talons or STX? Different form of DIDs? I mean, I don't know. Let me know.